Welcome to 4C Visions. I'm your host, R.V. Height, Director of Communications at Central Carolina Community College. In this edition of 4C Visions, it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Christy Holmes, CCCC Dean of Arts in STEM. Christy fell in love with higher education her first day at West Virginia University. Though she loved the classroom, she found the different offices and support systems difficult to navigate as a student. This led her to search for a role serving students and helping them navigate higher education. Christy has served in North Carolina's Community College for 15 years as a Spanish faculty member, academic advisor, department chair, and now Dean of Arts and STEM. She earned her bachelor and master's degrees from West Virginia University and her doctor of education from Wingate University. Christy, welcome to 4C Visions, but first, almost heaven. West Virginia. Oh, John Denver, I know we don't have anything on you, but we are. Uh, we know Christy's so proud of her West Virginia heritage, and uh, it's so good to have you with us today. Thank you, RV. I'm really pleased to be here with you, and I love North Carolina, too. Outstanding. Well, how would you describe your work as CCCC Dean of Arts and STEM and please share with our audience the meaning of STEM. Absolutely. So we'll start with STEM. STEM um, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. And as far as my role as Dean of Arts and STEM, um, I see it as I'm, I'm here to support, right? I'm here to support our five departments, the department chairs, and those faculty members, that, the instructors that are in the classroom. I want to make sure that they have all the tools and resources they need to provide the best classroom experience for our students and current programs that lead to meaningful um, and lucrative careers. Well, let's talk about some of the arts career community departments and programs and what opportunities are available for graduates of these programs. Absolutely. So within the arts career community, we have our English and Humanities Department, our Social Sciences Department, and our Broadcasting Production Technology Department. And within these departments, there's lots of programs for students um, to pursue. So in the Associate in Arts program, our students are planning to transfer to a four-year institution. They start here to get their general education courses, um, broadcasting, production technology. Um, these students are getting experience in radio and television, and you know they can become social media directors. There's really endless opportunities for our students in the arts career community, and it's, it's a really exciting opportunity. Well, and another exciting field is the STEM career community and those departments and programs, and what opportunities are available for those graduates? Yeah, so in STEM, we have two primary departments, um, science and mathematics. And within science and mathematics, these instructors are in charge of our associate in science degree and our associate in engineering degree, and those two are transfer degrees. We also have engineering technologies. So we have mechanical engineering technologies, electrical engineering technologies. We have our laser and photonics technology program, which is um, really unique here at the college. And we have two IT tracks as well, information technology, and students can pursue um, a career in cybersecurity. Our graduates get jobs all over the country. We're really proud of them. Um, some have traveled as far as California to work, to work at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Um, and some get jobs right here and in Sanford and do really well. It's amazing the number and the types of uh, programs that we do have available, particularly under your uh, field. Do you see that arts or STEM, uh, that students tend to gravitate to one of those more than the other? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because students do tend to gravitate towards one or the other, but they, our students are also very well-rounded. So when we say arts career community students are creative, well, so are STEM students, right? Um, but our STEM students love those hands-on programs where they're building something or taking something apart or learning how it works. And, and our arts career community, community students, excuse me, they love to create content. Well, during your time at CCCC, what have you seen as how the faculty supports students in and outside the college? This is my favorite thing to talk about. So as former, former faculty myself, um, I think community college 
instructors are here because they love students. They love to interact with students, and not only to provide that amazing classroom experience, but to also um, support students outside the classroom by um, serving as faculty advisors. They also take students on field trips to four-year universities, and, and they connect students to industry partners and, and potential employers. So our faculty are here because they love students, and that's one of my favorite parts of community college. Well, we transferring to other programs is a big deal for a lot of our students. Although we have the various degree programs that if you want to just move on to the working world from our college, you can do that. But what kind of transfer relationships does CCCC have with North Carolina's four-year institutions? Yeah, so North Carolina as a state is really unique but because we have the comprehensive articulation agreement and that agreement is an agreement between all 58 community colleges and our public universities. And that agreement says that our associate in arts, associate in science, and associate in engineering transfer degrees seamlessly transfer to those universities. So that's a wonderful opportunity for our students. We also have um, programs that are called co-admission programs with specific schools. So just as an example, we have C3 with North Carolina State University, and that means a student that applies and is accepted is an NC um, State University student and a CCC, CCCC student at the same time. And those programs offer unique opportunities in terms of scholarships and advising, um, advising opportunities. And you know, if, if a student is interested in a specific school and they want to know if we have a partnership, they can certainly reach out and ask. Outstanding. Well, what kind of short-term credential and enhanced skills opportunities are available at the college? Yeah, great question. So short-term opportunities are here. We know that not everyone can commit to coming on campus or studying online for two years. So we have, in addition to our associate degree programs, we have certificates, we have diplomas. Certificates can be um, completed in a semester. A semester is approximately four months long. We also have year-long diplomas. Um, in different areas. So I'll take IT for example, if there's a skill that you wanna learn but you don't wanna go through the full degree program, you could potentially get a certificate um, and, and learn some great skills in, in four months. We also have continuing education courses that may just be a matter of weeks. So say you wanna you know, learn Google Suite and we have a course in that and you can be done in a couple of weeks and update your skills. What message would you like to convey to potential CCCC students who may be in our viewing audience today. We are here for you. Um, Lee County, Harnett County, Chatham County, and beyond, we are your community college. We want to help um, provide access to courses that help you um, reach your personal and professional goals. So come see us. Christy, I want to talk to you just for a few minutes about you personally uh, and your experiences at West Virginia University. And I know that you said that it had kind of influenced your decision to become part of the community college family. Talk a little bit about that. Okay, um, so as a first generation college student, um, I knew I wanted to pursue a degree, but I had no idea what I was getting into. And West Virginia University, where I loved it, was huge, it was humongous. And so I didn't know how to navigate um, academic advising or financial aid or, or any of that. And I really didn't even understand which classes I needed to take to pursue my degree in foreign language. So I stumbled my way through because I loved school so much, but it taught me that I really want to help support faculty and students um, learn all of the opportunities that are available to them in terms of degrees and programs, but also scholarships and advising and extracurricular activities. So I, I fell in love with ed education, but I, I think my heart is with the community college the community college system and, and our mission and how we, we really have something for everyone. And I think it's very interesting about how, you know, a lot of folks want to go straight to the four-year university, but the community colleges offer not only the opportunity, as you said, to get that uh, education on a smaller level, but you can still move up oh, absolutely. To, the, uh, to the larger level. And uh, you may want to talk a little bit about the success that our students have once they go to a four-year institution. Sure. So our students have wonderful success rates um, once they transfer. The North Carolina Community uh, 
college system has, they collect data on student success rates and it's, it's shown that our transfer students perform really well um, in terms of grades and also a, gaining a, a lucrative career when they graduate. So um, our CC students are able to be in classrooms that are smaller than those large university lectures and they're just able to make great connections here that help them get ready for that larger university if they do intend to transfer. Can you share with our audience your contact information in case someone would like to get more information about you or specifically about the programs with the arts and STEM communities? Absolutely. So if you're interested in an arts and STEM program or you just want to talk more about the college, you can email me at the letter C Holmes, so C-H-O-L-M-E-S at C-C-C-C dot E-D-U. Um, you can look me up in the directory on our website, um, or you can come by the Lee County main campus where my office is and, and visit anytime. Well, Christy, what have you enjoyed about being at CCCC, and what do you think makes our college so special? The people, absolutely the people. There is not a day that goes by where I don't learn something new. I get to meet students, I get to meet instructors, um, I get to meet people from industry, I get to learn about lasers and photonics and um, artificial intelligence and it, there's never a dull day and, but the people that are here, they care about their programs, their content and students and they care about each other, it's a great place to be RV. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Christy. You can learn more about CCCC's art and STEM programs at www.cccc.edu. And we're going to learn more about the CCCC Public Safety and Criminal Justice Programs next on 4C Visions. Bring it. Catch you guys later. Mom wants us home. Okay. Bye, guys. You guys need a ride? Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. Have us some one on one. Uh, I gotta go eat, man. Sorry. I'll, I'll see you later. Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to 4C Visions. I'm your host, R.V. Height, Director of Communications at Central Carolina Community College. With me today is Roy Allen, CCCC Associate Dean of Public Safety and Criminal Justice. His life experiences are many, including his service as civil court and patrol commander captain for the Chatham County Sheriff's Department, from which he retired in 2015. A former CCCC criminal and just, justice adjunct instructor, Mr. Allen served as Dean of Public Safety and Human Services at Piedmont Community College before returning to CCCC in his current position. He has earned academic credentials from Alpena Community College, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, Methodist University, and Wingate University. Well, welcome to 4C Visions, Roy. Thank you for having me, RV. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about public safety and criminal justice. Well, it's good to have you. Well, you've had an interesting career as a law enforcement officer and as an educator. What has been life like for you personally to serve in those roles? That's an excellent question. So personally, it, it has been a joy. So for 32 years in law enforcement, uh, I've, I've held many positions. I, I started out working for Kmart. I worked in a, a city police department, sheriff's office, probation, parole, and in a corrections institution as well. So 
For 32 years, I've had a well-rounded opportunity to work in almost every facet of criminal justice, and I have I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't think I went to work ever one day. I went to fun, I worked with my friends, and our goal was to make a difference in people's lives, especially people experiencing a crisis situation. So personally, I've enjoyed my career, and professionally, it really helped prepare me for my role as an instructor in criminal justice, but especially as a dean of public safety, or associate dean of public safety, overseeing the public safety program and criminal justice curriculum. Public safety, uh, while a very uh, uh, interesting career and, and very, but I know that with that comes a lot of uh, uh, stressful times, a lot of, uh, uh, wh what is that like for these, what, how do you train these young people that are getting into the field mm. to what to expect from that experience? That's a fascinating question, RV. I don't know that you can train the students for that. It's, it's almost like you have to experience one time. We can talk a lot in the classroom. We can talk about a lot of different theories. Uh, but it's like having a robust uh, experience in my background, and I can add to the theories that I'm going to talk to. I can use all of my life experiences as a law enforcement officer to talk about theories of criminal justice. You almost have to go out there and experience working with people and being in those uh, very tense moments in order, to, in order to be able to work through them. But uh, we still work at that uh, every day, and in our continuing education programs, we try to make our training as realistic as possible, so when our law enforcement officers and EMS uh, uh, personnel, firefighters for that matter too, when they train, we make the training as realistic as possible so they can feel the tense moments, they can feel the excitement, they, they can feel the rush of adrenaline. We try to mimic those situations as close as possible so when they find themselves in those situations for the first time, they'll perform very well. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about the CCCC Public Safety Program. What does that entail? What kind of opportunities are there for potential students? So, geez, RV, we have so many opportunities for our students, both in curriculum and continuing education. Uh, we have programs in, in law enforcement. If you are a certified law enforcement officer and you need to do in-service training, you'll come to our emergency services training center here in Sanford, North Carolina, and Lee County, and you, you can take any of your certified uh, in-service training programs, but we also have a robust program of other trainings that you can come to, like maybe background investigator or field training officer or speed measurement instrument operator, so you can learn how to run a radar or a LIDAR and, and be able to clock vehicle speeds. Um, we also offer similar programs for firefighters and for EMS. For instance, we offer a basic law enforcement training. We also offer a basic fire cadet program. And most exciting, we are now offering, in collaboration with Harnett County EMS, a brand new EMS paramedic program being taught in, at Harnett County. And we are excited to, to report that that has been condensed down from an 11-month program to a six-and-a-half-month program. Very exciting. So it goes beyond just the policing, and there's also the fire portion of it, and there's also the EMS portion, which, which makes it such an exciting program, I'm sure. That's correct. That's why we like to refer to it as public safety, because uh, when somebody has a need, it could be fire, EMS, or, or law enforcement oriented, but uh, we like to be able to respond to it at every, any level. Well, Roy, let's talk a little bit about our criminal justice program and what that's like here. So the criminal justice program, we actually have three things that we could talk about here. Number one is our criminal justice proper, where it's a, a 67 uh, credit hour program. It's an associate of the art technology. It is a, uh, what we like to kind of refer to as a terminal degree. In other words, it doesn't transfer. But we have articulation agreements with a lot of universities and colleges across the state, so that, that degree will transfer. Um, we, we offer it at, at our three campuses. Uh, in Lee County, Harnett County, and Chatham County. We also are very excited to have a five-class forensics program where you will, be, you will take five courses in friction ridge analysis or fingerprints, uh, in crime scene uh, processing and photography, and when you're done with that five, 
five course program, you will be basically be a crime scene analysis person. And then the last thing that we are just getting ready to launch, RV, is the new public safety administration program that's gonna launch this fall. What's exciting about that is it is it is designed to teach fire, EMS, and law enforcement officers, as well as correction and, and loss prevention people, how to be an administrator in the in the public safety setting. We think you already know how to chase a suspect, resuscitate somebody, handle an inch and a half fire hose. The, the focus in that program is to teach you how to become a captain or a sheriff or a battalion chief or something like that. So we're pretty excited about being able to launch that program this fall. That's very exciting. And I'm sure that the job market for people uh, considering a career in public safety or criminal justice uh, must be wide open right now. It is very wide open. So I was looking at the numbers from uh, Department of Labor. It, it's between a four and a six, uh, uh, mark, four and a six percent growth for law enforcement and fire, closer to seven for EMS. But something else, thing, else that's very interesting, there are a lot of vacant positions in those fields right now. So not only do we have a projected growth over the next 10 years, but we have a lot of vacancies. So if you're interested, if you have some type of altruistic gene and you want to help people, especially when they're in a crisis situation, now is a good time to, to join either as an EMS technician, firefighter, law enforcement officer, get your certification. And in the, in the past few years, they have they've realized as much as a 10% increase in their salary. So now now is a good time. That's great. Roy, through your personal experiences, can you speak to the self-satisfaction that a person receives from working in public safety or criminal justice? Yeah, I've already kind of addressed that a little bit, RV. That's, that's another excellent question. Uh, again, I have come to fun every day. I don't think I've ever come to, uh, come to work. And again, my training, uh, my education, my knowledge, skills, and abilities that I have learned have served me well when I go to to help people during a crisis situation. It could be anything from helping them change the tire on the side of the road to uh, maybe um, going and helping them in a situation where they're having a difficult time communicating with their spouse. And uh, I, I have just really enjoyed it. And, and those opportunities are there right now for anybody else who's interested in following in my footsteps. And I'm sure that in your career, you've seen many, many different experiences or had many different experiences as a, as a law enforcement officer. Do any of them stick out in your mind, memories from your career that, uh, that just really stick with you? Several, <laughs> too many, too many to talk about today. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you about one. Uh, as I was driving down the road one night, I was by myself on patrol, and I, I passed a vehicle. I looked in the rearview mirror, and the and the brake lights weren't there. There was nothing from that vehicle, and it, uh, I felt it odd. So I turned around. And I thought maybe their lights were out. I was going to go talk to them, but when I turned around, the vehicle just wasn't there. And what I realized is in that split second when I was passing the car, it went off the road and down into a ravine and crashed in, in the river. And so when I pulled up on it, I was able to go down to the river. The vehicle was half partially submerged in the river and I was able to um, help the two people get out and to safety on the side of the river. So that sticks out as one of the most unusual and rewarding experiences I've ever had. Wow, well, I'm sure you have a lot of them that, that stick in your heart and uh, I'm sure that the satisfaction that you receive from helping so many people over the years is, is really, uh, uh, meant a lot to you. Yeah. Roy, I wanted to ask you too about our emergency service training center facilities. How beneficial are those facilities for the public safety program? So they are, they are very beneficial. If, if you have time and you ever want to come out to the emergency service training center, we have a burn building for the fire department almost every day. We're running firefighters through there to simulate. They're actually in a burning building and they're learning how to fight that fire. We have uh, simulations. We have EMS stations out there and anything you need to do. We have a complete track. You can drive uh, motor, uh, motor vehicles on their motorcycles. Uh, if you have time, come out there. It's a, it's a one-size-fits-all program, and it's a wonderful training facility for any of your public safety needs. And, uh, of course, that facility is known as the former Lee County Airport, uh, and, so, and it's used uh, by so many folks, not just uh, for our own training purposes, but uh, departments from throughout North Carolina come in and use those. 
They do. We have, so, so for instance, we have what we call a Viper Tower. It's a communications tower. And when that tower was erected on our site, there was an agreement that they would install different platforms at different heights. So for instance, we can do high angle rescue and we have departments come across from across the state of North Carolina to practice climbing up that tower and recovering for instance, workers that may have become injured up the tower. So, it, and it's not only that, but yes, even though we, we tend to look at our catchment area of Lee, Harnett, and Chatham counties, we still invite uh, public safety practitioners from across the state of North Carolina to come and, and use our very unique facilities out at the Emergency Services Training Center. How can people contact you for more information regarding the CCCC public safety and criminal justice programs? You can contact me at R Allen, that's R A L L E N, at cccc.edu. Roy, I know that as we, as we close up our program, that uh, you were in the law enforcement field, then you went to, uh, you came here as a, a teacher, uh, and then you went to Piedmont Community College, but you came back to CCCC. What do you think makes CCCC so special? especially regarding the public safety and criminal justice programs. You know, Central Carolina Community College really pays attention to its students. We, we offer robust training, robust curriculum. You know, we have, we have equal amounts of continuing education, equal amounts of, of curriculum classes. But I think, I think our faculty really want to make a difference in the students' lives. And you know, that's what I was a part of when I was an adjunct facu faculty member here. Uh, but I see it now that I'm back as associate dean, I see it even more, how um, our faculty really are altruistic and really trying to make a difference in the lives of their students and, and make sure that when they graduate, they'll be able to have a sustainable income in whatever it is that they decide to do. Well, as you can tell from what Royce uh, has told you today, uh, the CCCC Public Safety and Criminal Justice programs are amazing and offer a lot of uh, variety. And so you can learn more about these programs at www.cccc.edu or contact Roy and he'll be glad to get you more information about upcoming classes uh, that will fill, fill your heart with helping others uh, through such a wonderful career as public safety. Thank you. Roy, Arnold. thanks for being with us today, and thank you, viewers, for being with us on 4C Visions. <laughs>